Duck Donuts, not a sponsor. Check out those bad boys. You say that like you bought them, like you just walked in and saw them. I know. Why would you? Why? I can't do it. So, so we're here to work on a state-of-the-art vehicle. Two of them, if you want. <laughs> a 91 <laughs> truck. 191, 198. It's I was just on the phone about. with him for like the last half hour, you know, and he's been throwing. Which one's that? The, the one you're not, not looking at. Okay. Unless I can sweet talk you into doing a couple current draw tests. Okay, on. maybe. Well, he wants to chase his 1351 code. Yeah. I'm walking away from this one right yeah. now. Yeah. Because it's supposed to not start. A lot of times he said when it sits for a while, when it's moist and rainy and it won't start. And sits for times, a while is key with fuel pressure yeah. on that, probably. You know what I mean? Well, he's, he's, he's correlated it with rain and moisture. And he's like, but he was just his work truck and he was like, I'm driving it and it would just shut off on me. So he's already changed the ECM and distributor. ECM, and distributor. And he had the problem before. Pump, and he had this problem before. Went to the dealer, had the crank relearn done, and then after that it got a little bit better. And you know what I mean? And it's like, I've been messing with it. He said that he's chasing his 1351 code. You know what I mean? So I start, I never had it happen. You know yeah. what I mean? I just felt that it might have been a little bit low on power, like starving for fuel a little bit, would just not move in second until you got into first, and then it would downshift and pick up and go like the old ones would with clogged fuel filters. And, you know, but all that stuff's new. Engine's actually new. The, the, the injectors are like a year or so. Sometimes old. that's Delco. worse when everything's new. And he start replacing everything. So, anyway, I'm looking at the fuel pressure. I wanted to do injector leak because I had got a fuel trim imbalance between banks. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, uh, how much of one? One was like 20% for a while, and the other side wasn't, you know what I mean? So I'm thinking like injector, this and that, you know what I mean? And I, I put the fuel pressure gauge on, goes up to 55 pounds, then bleeds all the way down to 30. I'm like, I can't do a fuel balance, right. you know, injector right. balance with this. So I pinched off the return line, deadheaded the pump, got it up to 80. I realized the pump can do 80. Yeah. After I did that, now it's not bleeding off anymore. But something that you guys are missing, he told us yesterday was he experienced an extended crank time. After I did the after leak you down. After he the, did the leak down the, and it set the code. It did. So, so then I pulled the fuel pump relay, cleared the code, pulled the fuel pump relay, crank it over. As soon as I crank it over for more than 10 seconds, bam, 1351 code comes on. And if you look at the flow chart, it says if you disconnect the coil doing a compression test, it will set. It'll set a 1351 code. Yeah. And you're not disconnecting the module, which yeah. is the line they're talking about. Right. The it's the control of the module. They said disconnecting the coil. Yeah. You'll, so long That's crank set. time to me yeah. is going to cause a 1351. So I'm trying to explain to the guy, I'm not chasing your 1351 anymore. I did the AC voltage signal yep. from the computer to the module, yeah. and it's a nice 2.6 AC Wait, I can't get it to go away. Now, I don't know if this is a valid test or not, but when it was running, I decided to go on a lab scope side before I did the AC test, and I have like a five volt square wave. That's what it should be. I don't, you know I'm I mean? not familiar with an AC sine wave. But that's the flow chart is saying Communication that. between ECM and module on that's that. That's what it's saying. It shouldn't that, be an AC well, sine wave. Well, the only AC sine wave from that distributor would be the pickup inside, but I think on that model, that has a crank sensor, crank, and, and the pickup inside is a cam sensor, yeah, which is digital, yeah. and there shouldn't be any AC I'm sine just waves saying, on flow that. Flow chart says with that code, flow check, chart. check the AC signal. Flow and chart. Put your yeah. <laughs> put, put oh, I, you know what are you gonna do? So it, said, it said on an AC scale you should have one to four volts. So I did it. It was a we nice should probably talk about lane. this while we have a diagram in front of For us sure. or when I look at that. that so a '98 intermittent. Yeah. Be, that you want just, us to just, recreate. Just, just tell me, don't chase the 1351. Okay. That, yeah. That's that's right. what I put my fist on. I'm All like, right. I'm not chasing it anymore. Walk I just away. told Danner, well, I, I, I don't want to do that one. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> it's intermittent, and the last thing I want to do is mother um, He wants a starter current measurement on that truck, the 98 that's setting that weird code, that 1351 code and then a fuel pump current measurement, because I had mentioned to him about, I've seen dead armatures on that do something weird and, and give intermittent long crank, but he's complaining about it dying on him on the road. A dead armature, one armature dead on a pump's not yeah, gonna do that, because it'll spin right yeah, past and it. Yeah, it hasn't happened in like three weeks, you know what I mean? So I know we're not, you know, but I had done a few 
tests already to get to a point where I said, I'm not chasing that 1351 code anymore. I'm with you. And then he sent me a video of a guy chasing a 1351 code. From a starter. slow crank. From a slow crank. Has he had slow cranking? You know, and I, and, Has you know, he had slow cranking? He said, well, he said recently it seems to be cranking way, very fast now. And he's- Very you know, fast is good. I, I know, but it wasn't before. Mm. It's like, if you yeah. look at it, it's a code that sets under 250 RPM. You know what I mean? When it cranks and it doesn't well, start. That sounds like the old freaking EST code. Forty. Remember the 41 or 42 codes from same thing. Long crank times that yeah. would do that on the old GS. But I still don't think it would shut off the car because Can of it. Can you it's pull just that a, diagram up and show yes. me the wire you were talking about? Yeah. Here. Oh. This wire. So you the have the ignition coil not out. The, not out. The timing signal. Yeah, it's just going to be a square wave. That's what I see. There ain't no freaking Look, AC no, sine no, wave on there. On. Yeah, I'm, I measured it, man. It was there. You measured it with a digital meter, right? With, with a, my lab scope. Oh, you saw an SI I saw a nice 2.6 volt. What did I say the code was? Uh, 1351. 1351. It's, it Engine less stuff. than 250 RPM. EST voltage greater than 49. EST is enabled. Here's the problem. This doesn't have the old school EST module mode switching mechanism. It's a base module. This is computer controlled all the time. And it was, Why are the, they calling it EST I don't know, enabled? This is what pisses me off there. Clear the DDC, disconnect the injector connector. I didn't. I had the fuel pump relay out because you don't want it to crank for 30 seconds. Yeah. The 1351 is set. Go to next step, right? Next step was turn ignition off. Wait, 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 hold on. Disconnect injectors, crank the engine, check for DTC. So in other words, what sucks about these ones is they won't tell you, is that what it's supposed to do? To me, yes, it should. That's what that says right there. Crank engine, check DTCs is, is set, right? It should set. Well, it's set. Well, okay, look, but if it does set, go to the next step. Turn ignition off, reconnect injector connector, disconnect the ignition module connector, disconnect the, the coil module connector, okay. which is this one, right. and measure this white wire right from the computer that's the right? one going to the computer yes right. and it says digital meter ignition toil, coil b harness side it's unplugged ac voltmeter on the ac seal crank it note the voltage reading if it's one to four volts go to step nine i have a 2.6 nice square wave go to step nine then it starts oh, telling me to check they, for but grounds they, but and, this is for a dvom why why would they put it on an AC scale? I'm just saying I'm getting a good AC signal out of it on that line with it unplugged from the module. Now with it plugged back Crank in. Crank engine note voltage. If voltage is one to four, go to step nine. Yeah, nine. If, if it's nine not starts, one to four, go to the next step. Okay, so nine says what? They want you to start checking grounds and stuff through the, you know, and stuff. And then it says if all that, if it said if it's all good, replace the module. The, I want to go back. Circuit description up top. Enhanced. Thanks. I, I sat there and read that for an hour and thought about it. Provides timing input, right? VC uh, um, utilizes reference pulse to determine indiv individual ignition and spark time there for each cylinder. Dirt on daddy's clothes. Once the VCM calculates timing, timing signal is sent Fragile. to the ignition control module. Fragile. Each Fragile. timing pulse received. Triggers the module. This is this this description's wrong. This this doesn't have the EST. Look, all this has is this coil out signal. This is coil negative right there. That's the coil control, right? That is controlled all the time by this ignition timing signal. That's it. That's it. They're calling it EST output signal from the engine computer. That is a square wave. An intermittent may be caused by poor connection, rub through wire insulation or broken wire inslot, inspect VCM harness, improper mating, right, right, connection okay. That's not helping me. What are our options through this flowchart? What what are we replacing? Replace module. ignition module, repair ignition module connection, hey. check for poor connection at ignition module, repair open and ignition coil module ground. Replace the VCM, repair the VCM. That's the vehicle control module. That's the engine computer. Repair open an IC circuit between VCM and module. Nothing in here is mentioning that code setting EST voltage greater than 4.9. P1351, replaced module, replaced module, replaced converter, replaced coil. Yeah, all of these like real fixes are all control module, control module, control module stuff. 
But I could see you. I could see you setting that code if you have no spark and all that stuff. You know what I mean? But I say so confirm customer's complaint. Found engine stalled. Connect the scan tool. That's our code. Use scan tool to clear codes. Disconnected fuel injector. Cranked engine found code reset. Reconnected fuel injector. This is what the flow chart is telling you to do. Disconnect control module connector. Visually inspect the connector. Terminal found no obvious signs. Use multimeter. Measure the voltage on the timing signal on the harness side of the connector while cranking and found measured voltage was within the one to four volts. Key on engine off, use multimeter, check presence of ignition voltage and ground. Both were present, test results verified, ignition control module was faulty. So it shouldn't set this code on cranking is what I'm getting, getting by this. Yeah, see that's, that's concerning to me. These are common repairs. These are our top repairs for this code. Replaced fuel pump. And that goes along with what Danner said. He pulled the fuel pump relay and he makes this code set by cranking it over with the relay removed. Look at this top replace parts on this. Oh, nice. That's, nice. that's for the 1351 code. Wow. Fuel pump. 10 nice. people replaced the fuel pump to get rid of that code. What's that tell you? It tells you the flow chart's bull Bleep. We're gonna do what Danner asked us to do. We're, we're going to go do a couple of current measurements and voltage measurements. I'm not sure how Caleb's going to pull all this together and pull the footage out from our last video that we did on the 91 fuel pump job to this 98 that's an intermittent issue. And I don't want to get buried in this truck. And the 1351 code that we researched, um, you know, to have 10 different people change a fuel pump to fix this code is telling me that long crank times are going to set this code. And that the manufacturer flow chart is not telling us that and Danner proved it by unplugging the fuel pump relay and cranking it over in that code sets however that code sets also when you have ignition module failures computer failures wiring problems and that fired right up like like that. that's why we're gonna do a couple measurements for Danner and then we're just gonna walk away from this thing one of those cars every part that's known to man has been replaced on it just look at the engine Throttle body's new. That's your ignition module right there. That's new. Coil looks new. Wires, cap, rotor, engine computer. Where is my fuel pump? Fuel pump relay. I'm gonna get my adapter for that and I'll get the uh, DLC so we can plug in and see this code show up too. Best tool known to mankind. Everybody wants one. AES is redesigning it. This is the U-Activate. Freaking love this tool, man. This is just gonna go this in place of the relay and it's gonna help me be able to uh, just run the pump manually. So just to get a real quick fuel pump current measurement to kind of match what we did on the last truck. I don't know if these videos, will, this will be together, we'll be separate. Just gonna hook around that. Nice easy way for me to measure pump current and flip the switch. Pump is running. That's low. Six amps is low. Let's start it. Get our battery voltage up. This should be higher amperage. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a real huge fan of that waveform, man. These should be closer to 10 amps. And we're hovering around six. a surge there too like a, a little hesitation on on the rev up i'm gonna grab my fuel pressure gauge you want to um the only thing i wanted to add real quick to your your conversation was when you were saying that nowhere does it say a long crank time can cause this but there is somewhere in one of the charts i was looking at that said if you disconnect the coil to do a compression test you can set that code not the module like the coil you know what I mean? Itself. The coil itself. So if you disconnect the coil, that's how they worded it. If you disconnect the coil to do a compression test, you can generate a, a 1351 code, which kind of leads you to what you were saying and what we're experiencing is that you just disable this thing from starting and with a long crank time. And it will set a 1351. Set a 1351. Oh, let me turn this on. So we had 60. 60 is good. All right, go ahead, start it for me. I like 52, we're at 52. 
Yeah, so my gauge might be skewed a couple pounds in because I saw like 49 or 50 on mine. 52 is pretty typical what you see on these. Stay right where you're at, Caleb. I'm going to rev this a few times. I got, I got. Watch that whole injector housing. Right in here. Should that be lifting up like no. that? <laughs> no. Why would that happen? I don't know. I'm trying to remember how they're designed. I don't know. That shouldn't be. I mean, that'd be vacuum that's... So vacuum vacuum is probably pulling it down when you're you're losing vacuum uh, okay. and it's rising yeah, up. Yeah, because there is a seal around yeah, there. Yeah, but okay. that shouldn't be moving. I've never, I've never seen that That before. shouldn't be moving. I don't think fuel pressure is your issue, man. Okay. I mean, I don't like this pump waveform. I've seen better. Oh. Let me let me zoom in on this a little bit more. Yeah, I mean you see the oscillations yeah. in it. Um, I've seen worse though, man. And and uh, as far as like RPM goes, these generally around six thousand RPM. But my truck's like around nine thousand RPM. So every car is different. Yeah. Let me AC couple this, and then change my vo amperage scale to see a little bit more detail. Pause that one. See if we see unique characteristics you know we'll go with maybe that high one right there and that high one right there what do you think one two three four five six seven eight nine ten i believe that and where those cursors are where i placed them our measurement is delta time is 9.29 milliseconds 10 milliseconds over that period of time uh, just knowing my math on 10 milliseconds, that's 6,000 RPM. So we're about 6,000, we're faster than 6,000 RPM on that pump. And to be honest, I've seen better looking waveforms, but pressure's good. Yeah, like I said. It's good when you rev it, it's not dropping off. Yeah, it's going up when we're revving it. I don't think pump's the issue. I think I'm okay with that. I've seen better. I think the amperage may be a little bit low, but the pump speed is good. So then you're, we're left with recreating the fault, you know? And But he also did say that it died on him while he was driving it, right? Sometimes he put it in neutral and start it back up, and sometimes it would like quit, but then recover and start back up. You know what I mean? Like it was a complete shutdown. And during that time when it was happening, there was a couple times where it wouldn't start. There was like really long crank time. And then he wants to chase the 1351, but I think you're running, you're chasing a ghost with that code. We need to get it to actually act up, yep. you know? Yep. And the only thing I saw is when I first hooked my gauge up, like I was saying before, I, I didn't have it running like you did, but I did the prime and then shut it off. And these things prime when you turn them off too. You mentioned it bled down It would fast. bleed down to Stay like 30 pounds. Stay on that gauge, pounds. almost shut it and off. It, it, after I deadheaded it, it never happened again. See, it primed, it went up to 60. Are you, you're still running. Oh, uh, let's shut the pump off. Yeah, and that's, that's the same thing I have. I was, so my gauge is like two pounds low then, because I was showing 56. <sighs> Wait, I want to see if we can recreate this. Uh, easily. Yeah, there's no codes. So just leave your- History codes. I'll just leave that pump off. Yeah, now watch. I'll, it'll try to start once, you know, because there's some in there. Oh yeah, you can clearly see on this one too that this is a redesigned CPI because it ran all the way down to 20 PSI. They got rid of those mechanical end pieces, I guess. Yep. Did it set it? Yep. Ignition coil one and four control circuit high voltage. Isn't that weird? And then it just disappeared. It showed up. Then oh, I just turned the key off. Oh, you want me to leave the key leave on? Leave the key on, yeah. So your long crank sets that code. It, it actually is bouncing back and forth. These will do that sometimes. Yeah. But that's why I decided to quit chasing the code because I can religiously duplicate it by just disabling the thing from starting, no matter how I do it, whether it's injector harness, fuel pump, mm -hmm. coil, it doesn't matter. If it don't start. It's weird, this is bouncing. It's showing the code, then goes away. And it shows the code and goes away. But I've seen that before. The fact that that code is there from a long crank time makes me want to say, 
I'm stopping. Yeah, uh, there's exactly. no That's what I told him. I no reason to go him. any further. I did just because I wanted to see the AC and wanted to see why I saw a digital signal on it when it was running and then why I saw an AC signal you know, just cranking like that. Did you disable it you, to see the AC signal or do you? Well, you got to disconnect the module so it won't start. Is the only time you're going to see the AC signal? Yeah, disconnect it. Other than that, it's going to take the five volts from the feed on the module and the computer's probably pulling it down. Which one is it? It was white. White white and black or white? One of the There's two. two. There's a white and black on the end. That's not the end one. The white one. White one's the EST, so we'd have, this is the module we're talking about. Power feed for the module, the ground for the module, the, that'd be coil negative is white black, right? Probably. And then the white is my EST wire, which is a computer's control of this module. And that's the one that my brother was talking about earlier with, and we were looking at the flow chart with this AC sine wave. <clears throat> Let's see what this looks like. All right, so this, we're trying to duplicate Danner's AC sine wave he was describing to us, and we have the fuel pump disabled still. But it won't start because you got the module unplugged. So. No, I, ha I have the module plugged back in. You want it unplugged for this test. Unplugged. For this test. This is what the computer is sending to that module. Okay, so they want it unplugged for this test? Yes. I don't want it unplugged. I want to see what it's actually sending plugged well, in. Well, you will once you go into the DC side. Just do, do what I did. Oh. Unplug it. The All module. Right. All right, hold on. Module sits right down there. Go ahead, Danner. No, it's a square wave. Are you on the AC scale? No, you shouldn't be on an AC scale. Go on the AC scale, like it said. Well, if I go on the AC scale. Just do it, just please do it. If I AC couple a scope, it will, still, it will still draw the square wave. It shows you changes in voltage. It's a bullshit flow chart. Yeah, I, that's why no I, one has a lab scope back then when yes, they made it. Yes, it was yeah. never an yeah. AC scale. The only reason that they put you on an AC scale for so this see is so you could see the bleep. square wave. Yeah, yeah. That's a bull bleep. I know, but just put it on AC once. Just do it so you can see it. Come on. Oh, first of all, wait. Crank it. I want to show you the difference. Okay. Go ahead. I'll, I'll switch it while you're cranking it. Go ahead. Keep cranking. Switch into AC. Okay. Good. Come now. Come here. Now this is this is this is not. Uh, oh, I missed it. Go back and do kill it. Kill the battery. No, we're not. Then it's gonna crank slow instead of thirteen fifty one. Wait, go. hold on one second. Let me uh, increase my time base here a little bit. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So did I Bleep. miss it again? I did. Sorry. <laughs> Hold on you know a second. How much editing there. Caleb has to do now? He'd be like, all right. No, man, we're good. This right. is the one. All right, crank it. Oh, I... all right. Okay. I'm just making sure you get it. <laughs> I can't show you both. The reason I keep... I don't want you to show me both. I just want you to see what I saw. <laughs> I want everyone else to understand what we're doing. There's your square. It's a it's square wave. I know. It's always a square wave. That's when you were describing it to me and you're like, AC sine wave. I'm like, I know this system. There ain't no freaking square uh, sine wave. If I AC couple that, all that does is moves the square wave down to zero. But that's the lab scope. Yeah. You saw an AC sine wave. I just went wave on the DVOM. On... Just, just go to yeah. AC. That's all. I, don't, yes. don't couple and yes. like scanner danner it. Just but, do what it said. No, man. but doing what it said is bullshit. I know, but it just said DC, if it's between one I'm... and four volts, then you're good, is what it's saying. It's a bullshit test. It's a zero is that five volt square is wave. Is that going to graph? No. Why? It's just, you want to graph yeah, it? Yeah, that's what I saw. That's what I you want. <laughs> I'm going to graph the AC just so you can see it's it. It's still not going to work like that. No. No. I mean, Graphing multimeter, okay. Yeah, Volts AC. That's all. It's not gonna be a. It's not what you think it is. <laughs> I, okay. The the flow chart's stupid. <laughs> nothing. Come on, man. What There's the hell? Nothing there. What the hell did I see? You weren't connected. It was 2.6 volts, man. It was a nice little. What's the middle of zero and five? 2.6. <laughs> <laughs> but I know, but it was, <laughs> but it, <laughs> it was averaging your square wave. You went under volts AC RMS. Yeah. Let's drop this down to five volts. That's peak detected. 
I, I didn't have anything on that. Nothing? No. Okay, I quit then. You were we using the graphing meter. You weren't using volts DC average. You yeah. were using AC. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, I mean, if I go to like an AC voltmeter, that's the digital meter AC, and we crank it there, see, see if you have something. No, I don't have nothing. It's not doing anything. Here's the thing though, lab scope, this is channel. Oh, that's why. I'm on channel, <laughs> channel two. <laughs> channel two. <laughs> Hold on, let's go back. I have my amp probe still connected to channel one and I'm not using that. <laughs> Digital meter, <laughs> graphing meter. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, wrong, wrong channel. <laughs> Sorry, Danner. No, it's okay, I've been here. Okay, go ahead, crank it. <laughs> okay, you can come look at it now. <laughs> it's there. <laughs> what you wanted to see is there. I just, I just wanted you to but see it. But here's the thing, it's a, it's a zero to five volt square wave that the manufacturer flow chart when they wrote this, nobody had lab scopes, yeah. so they, the That's the AC, only way you're going to see well, the it. The AC yeah. sine wave, I guess, or the AC scale picks up changes yeah. better than the yeah. DC one yeah. does. I believe that. That's, but it's not a yeah. sine wave. Okay, now you had a square wave the whole time it wasn't starting. Plug it back in now. Go back to your lab yeah. scope with DC. Yeah. This is a, just so everyone's clear here, this is a zero five volt square wave that the manufacturer is giving you, in my opinion, a bullshit test. I hate flow charts. The manufacturers, they give you such stupid stuff sometimes. This is a freaking square wave. Here, I just want everyone to see this square wave one more time. Go ahead, crank that for me again, Danner. But you gotta see what happens with it plugged All in. All right, I will. This is the green trace. Watch the green trace, ignore the yellow. It's a square wave. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm gonna plug it in. Now plug it in. Yep. Now flip on your fuel pump. Okay. How do I do it? Just Upward, on? toward you, yep. You have a square wave, right? Okay, now. Don't worry about it. I don't know if it'll show up this way when I run out of fuel. But watch now when I'm cranking it with it plugged in, that flat line. And that I don't understand. I got a square wave the whole time. Really? Is it flat lined on me? I got a square wave the whole time. Even without it starting? Yep, which is the way it should work. This is where the engine died and this is where you restarted it. And you know, of course the frequency is gonna change because it tried to start here. Yeah. And then this is where you cranked it the rest of the way. And then it did change, it did change. Let's look at this. There, there was a square wave change. Let's go a couple frames over. You see how the- Maybe I didn't have my time. Well, no, I mean, yeah, something. but you see the, the duty cycle changed of the square wave. So well, the only- You see, I was looking at my little teeny screen yeah. on mine with the it, it shows two different things yeah and all i saw was the up ramp of it and it went off the chart so maybe the time base change it could and be and that's uh, that's why i thought i saw a flat line flat line because i didn't you go were, down and see it you were graphing the frequency of yeah, it yeah and i saw the flat line on mine but i don't have a, a eight inch screen i have mm -hmm. my, a little two inch bar yep. so i saw it go up to five volt and just stay there well okay, i mean good. looking at this though i mean we clearly we clearly see a pulse width change but that's just probably in the computer strategy where you know the car's not starting so yeah. it's like all right well i'm going to give you more dwell time you know yeah. i'm going to energize the coil for a lot longer and let it go and, and then it's going to set the 1351 code. yeah i mean <laughs> yeah. in either case you're still when this coil fires, Danner, is the trailing edge of this square wave. So that square wave turns the base of the transistor on, which allows flow through the coil. And then when we let it go, that's where spark occurs. So if you look at this, just, just hear me out here for a second, because this is, I think you can see it. If you go from the trailing edge of that one to the trailing edge of that one, right? Mm -hmm. And then the trailing edge of that to the spacing, like just looking at, at the spacing, mm -hmm. The spacing really is not changing, is it? What's the time frame there? That's delta is set about 80 milliseconds. And then from there to there is 71. So it did change a little bit. Um, each of those, the trailing edge is your timing signal is my point. So it could, you know, there was a different dwell time the computer added to that. Why? I don't know. But that, to me, the computer's see, fine. That, that's whenever it would set the code, when I'd see Probably. it on my graph, and I would see that five volt stay on my screen the whole time, and mm -hmm. then the code would kick, you know, because right, right here, it's starting, and it's tight, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So yeah, we just, this one here, it's got to act up. You know, the only other thing he had sent 
me a video of someone that had the starter issue. He wanted to. And, and if that's the case, and, and look, the other thing too, ten different people changed the fuel pump for this code, and that tells me that some of the guys that recreated this code, it tells me that if you disable something, you're going to be recreating this code no matter what. Yeah. So why chase it? You know, unless you have no spark in that code, then you can go down the avenue yes. of that flow chart of looking for the ground. Yes. And the, powers and yes. and they just have you using a test light you know jump between the two yeah. to check rounds on and the honestly chart. there's no reason to check power and ground to a coil that's functional yeah that means we're kind of like done until this thing dies you know where's he getting his parts at too man you know what i mean oh, he said it was an ac delco that ain't injector. no ac delco freaking module Oh, I don't know about the mod. That looks like an eBay special right there. Well, he started throwing all that stuff on because of the 1351. Yeah, I think I'm done. I, I don't know what else to tell you right now on this with an intermittent 1351 that we're pretty certain that will set can. on all of these systems if, it, don't if it doesn't start. Do you still want hooked up in here? Uh, no. You want me to clear the code? Mm, yeah, might as well. Turn your key on. You can uh, start it real quick. I want to make sure I don't have any fuel any fuel leak percentage trims look good they're over here on the left column short term one two long term one yeah, and see, two i was in the in like 18 on one side i was driving it though was almost there was some minuses there I was almost wondering if one of the, yeah, it was negative. I was almost wondering if one of the injectors was stuck partially open or something. Giving him a long crank, but that, yeah. that wouldn't make it shut down on him, no. you know? Put your short terms, minus 14 on both banks. They weren't even, they weren't even before. It was different left and right. But like I said, everything changed when I deadheaded the pump, so I don't know what the heck I did. But I never had the no start or the shutdown, so just to see where we're at so I can totally step away from it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so it, it breaks. But it, it cranks good right now. I know. And he said it wasn't doing that either. I think we're done. Lesson here is know when to walk away. That's what we're doing. We walking away. It ain't broke, can't fix it. I'm not throwing parts at it. So, yeah, I got nothing else to say. End of show. <laughs> I just told everyone end of show. Oh, did you? Okay. <laughs> That's good. Well, you want me to measure am uh, amperage with that? What's your scale conversions on that? I don't know. Should say one like... Alpha, one millivolt equals an amp. Okay, we can do that then. And then there's a zero thing. Go around can... that big fat cable. All right, so we're not done. Danner wants to do a... Freaking well, no, the customer wanted one, so customer know, wants a starter current value measurement. For his non repair. Okay, so we're using a fluke meter that is one millivolt per amp, and so that would be one one volt would be a thousand amps. With that, one millivolt per amp. I don't want to do math on Friday. <laughs> I, don't want, I never want to do math on camera. <laughs> I always get it wrong, always. Here, I'll unplug, let me unplug the coil. Sure. But then we're gonna set a code. I don't care. All right, go ahead. All right. Yeah, initial current, there ain't nothing wrong with this, man. Initial current. Like 200 going down to 125. Initial current's 468 amps, which is not something you would normally see, like on a lab scope, you see it because, you know, you don't see yeah. those things on yeah. regular meters, but. Yeah, so you get a, the a peak, peak. The peak of that's 0.4, so I'm looking at the bottom uh, scale, it's 0.468 down, down so in there. So it's 400 some amps. Yeah, and then your, peak, your peak. overall average, let's, let's show that, just, just use cursor one, cursor one, so 429. Okay. And then your your average, like just we'll just pick one of those humps. You know, yeah. it's relative compression basically is 178 amps. Okay. Nothing wrong with Yeah. Nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah. Screw it. So I'm the, get the, some tires. the question then is cause or effect. Is it is the 1351 code causing his shutdown intermittent no start, or is his shutdown intermittent no start causing the 1351 yeah. code? You know what I mean? And it could be both. <laughs> it could be. It could be. So my suggestion, 
to be honest, I'd be getting a different module on that. Not an eBay special like it looks like. Gotta see it fail, man. Here's your keys. Yeah. And I haven't seen but it at least fail it, in two at weeks. least that answers some of your questions on your AC sine wave yeah. stuff, yeah. you know? Yeah. Maybe. No, I'm just glad that you agree with me that we're setting that code because it's not starting. Like I, I, I think so. I told him that I, I don't want to chase it anymore. I said, I, it's, I'm with you. There's a chance that you still could have a, an ignition primary failure mm -hmm. with the computer, the mm -hmm. module, the, the coil. The wiring, I mean, that harness runs down below the back of the intake. It, it could be rubbing. No, it's this one right here that goes underneath. <laughs> Is it? It's just right, right underneath the air cleaner. Okay. You know what I mean? I, yeah. And I wiggled all that while I was yeah. having it run. I never saw anything change, you know what I mean? Yeah. So whether or not, you know what I mean? Who knows why it quit? You know what I mean? I honestly, I didn't pull the cap off to see if there's a burnt rotor, you know what I mean? But you could have like something dumb like exactly. that. Exactly. The Chinese part. Yep. That just oh, well, those, internally. Those flat distributor caps were junk from day one. I've bought them that were junk. I have too. Right firing from number five yep, already. Right out, right out of the freaking box, yep. they were junk. So maybe this gets produced and the owner found Danner's shop through us and YouTube and we apologize, man. We're doing the best we can and you have to know when to say no and that's where we are right now. I'm, I'm not chasing a ghost right now on this and it needs to happen for us to fix it. That's where we are. And, end of what we got for right now so hopefully you learned something thanks for joining us guys we'll see you next time hey guys real quick update on this truck and i felt this was very important to do particularly because this customer watches me right here on youtube i don't know who this is i never met them but uh he brought the truck to my brother's shop because of what we do and i i, I feel it's my duty to really speak to this customer and to you guys too and give you an update on what happened so we found out that when he came to pick up the truck, that it immediately had a running problem on his way home and he barely made it home. Um, I just talked to my brother on the phone and he told me that the customer told him that he had to floor it to drive it home. Um, it would stall at red lights if he didn't double foot it and it was running real rough, but he could drive it at wide open throttle. And so those are symptoms of an overfueling problem, in my opinion. Those are symptoms of an overfueling problem. Now there's some keys in this video that I didn't recognize until now with this symptom. And that is when we looked at the fuel trim data, my brother said that he saw opposite fuel trim numbers, like minus 17 on one bank, and we were seeing good fuel trim numbers. So there's some conflicting data there. There's also a piece when my brother pinched off the return line and did the bleed down test or the deadhead test to check fuel pump max pressure that what he said was the bleed down problem that he saw fixed itself. And so I'm thinking about this and I'm like, I wonder, is it possible that we had an injector sticking open on one bank on this truck? And that would give us stalling at lights, overfueling, uh, running rough, runs real good at wide open throttle. However, I, I'm still left with some questions because the original symptoms, what we were told, so customer talked to my brother, my brother talked to me, is we were told that it died while driving. So if it died while driving and then it was a complete shutdown as it was described, and then long crank time and wouldn't restart. So there, I have some questions there because a stuck open fuel injector is not gonna make it die completely and not restart. I mean, it's possible that it could flood the engine out, but the way that those sequential port, um, central port injectors work, it would really just flood that one cylinder. But it is spraying in the manifold, it is possible. We could get a flooded condition and a no start, it's possible, but that's a stretch, the no start part concerns me. So a question to you, Mr. Customer, whoever you are, thanks for letting us look at your truck. Um, I apologize we didn't fix it. And it's really unfortunate that as soon as you took it, it was acting up. But a question for you is when this happens, again, if you're still fighting this problem, here's what we need. I need to know your fuel trim data. I need to know what those fuel trims are showing you while it's rough running. The other question for you, are you getting white smoke out of your tailpipe? 
And if you are, then we're on, we're on an injector issue here and uh, not a module uh, problem as I described in the video. We're worried about the module. I didn't like the module being a non-OEM part. I don't know where you got it from. I believe that code that, we're, that you were concerned about um, is a false code. It is not a false code. It's an effect, not a cause. And um, if you're questioning your fuel pump, I I'm okay with that pump. I think running at 6,000 RPM with an average of six to seven amps was good. The amperage is a little bit low for one of these CPI systems, but I'm okay with that. And I know we had some up downs of the waveform that some will look at and say, hey, maybe that pump's failing. But to have the test that we did where I snapped the throttle and we looked at pressures, those look good. And, um, and then having an 80 PSI max, that number sounded good too. So um, here's the other thing that tells me this is not a pump. You said to my brother that you could drive it and it ran well at wide open throttle. When you have low pressure issues and pump issues, it's the opposite. It runs good at low speeds, but not at higher RPM. So I just wanted to update you guys with that. We are still fighting this problem. We have not heard from this customer since um, he took it home. And I feel bad again for you, Mr. Customer, but thanks for giving us a shot. I hope this information helps you and i hope this information helps my community in understanding what's going on here guys thank you so much we appreciate your time and we'll see you next time we're gonna do what danner asked us to do we're, we're gonna go do a couple of yeah well not here all day but when he comes in yeah he'll turn a 10 minute diagnostic job into a four hour production because <laughs> we're teaching man we're teaching <laughs>